five. There we go. Okay, gold downstream. So let me, uh, I'm gonna make sure I still got the uh, information here on the phone. I'll check it from time to time to make sure that any questions you have. So what I thought we'd talk about tonight, it's kind of a topic I've hit on in the past. And that is um, when we're looking for gold, one of the places we look for obviously is placer gold. Okay, so placer deposits. And specifically, uh, what we call riparian or riverine, you know, riverborne, streamborne water deposits. And we've always talked about this over and over again. And that is the way the helical flow works. And you can look that up on my uh, reports. There's a helical flow report. But basically, the water will scrub the gold from the outside to the inside of the bend. That's the way the water has to move to make the turn. What's happening here is the net result is there's a what we call a vector. The water has to turn the corner. Otherwise, normally it'd keep going straight ahead. But if there is if there's a need for it to turn, it has to do it by it can't just turn the corner. You think, oh, well, just like a car, you turn the corner. No, it doesn't work that way. It's going to have to roll over itself. And in that rolling motion goes a scrubbing action. The scrubbing action essentially takes material from this outside and breaks it off, scrubs it clean. This is in flood and, and essentially sweeps it over here. Okay, we've talked about this in the past. That sweeping motion deposits gold on the inside of the bend. Hence, the gold line will tend to build up over here. Now, when it starts to sweep around the other side, the gold line goes across the river, down the middle, okay and gets swept over to deposit over here now that's not what tonight's about tonight is basically a chance to look at this and say what weirdness could go on here and the why this happens is this turning motion i don't want to go into that here it's too much material but just trust me it follows the helical flow motion which is kind of like a street sweeper sweeping the gold onto the inside of the bend Every time it turns a corner, it sweeps toward the inside. Unless <clears throat> a really big flood comes along, something like this, and the flood gets so high that it breaks this barrier called, essentially called the, the stream uh, bank, okay, and overcomes that and floods it and pushes water through which essentially blasts all of this material out the back end here downstream. And in so doing, leaves, leaves an interesting pattern in the middle. Okay, this chunk right here. So the new inside of the bend is over here, but it's really here. So it happened here, it turned the corner, cut through, and in so doing, changed the direction of flow back around the other way. So it flipped directions. This happens quite often with meandering rivers and cutting of streams. When they cut through or they break through to form an oxbow lake or an oxbow you know, cut, they basically will rip off that whole side of the river and all of a sudden the flow goes in the opposite direction. To make that corner, it has to, it has to sweep in the opposite direction. It's the only way it can make that corner. Again, going back to helical flow. And so what ends up happening there is the new deposit starts to form on this side over here Okay, whereas it was forming, it was forming here. It's now coming from over here and forming here. See the difference? The gold was going from there to there, and now it's going from here to here. Real important if you're looking for gold, because one of the places that oftentimes gets skipped is a gravel bar down the middle of the stream. This thing. And when that happens, it's a problem because you're missing some potential gold. Now, it isn't always guaranteed there's going to be a lot of gold there because remember all the sweeping action it went to make that flooding may have also ripped, up, ripped out any gold that was along this berm on this side. But here's the deal. When you look at this stream, you should also look and see if there's any kind of indication that the stream used to flow somewhere else before. Like right here. Is there a place right in here that used to be flowing in the opposite curvature. If it is, then it's on the inside of that bend. Not the inside of the new bend, but it may also be on both sides. That's the problem. Because remember, we got some here, 
and we've got some here. <coughs> and so, pardon me. And so the idea is, what we wanted to call your attention to tonight is the possibility of gold down the middle of the stream in a weird way. See, normally, middle of the stream would be this thing where it crosses across as the S-curve kind of changes curvature. You know, when it, when it inflects, they call it, it goes through zero curvature, a straight line. When it's in a straight line, the gold will follow that straight line. But when it's not, it's going to go toward the inside, okay? But see, this one has this property where the inside is on one side of this island, and it's also on the other side because of history. It used to flow on the other side in a different bend than it does now. It's flowing to the opposite side. When that flow changes, the gold sweeping action changes too. And that's what tonight's all about. Real simple lesson. And that is, be aware that the gold could be on, these things can be on either side of the island and you need to do some test pans to find out. Also, don't be surprised if it's not there in very strong quantities because of what I talked about earlier, where it might have, when it flooded, it may have swept that whole inside bend here, it was the older bend, away. It may have disappeared because this flooding to make this cut had to be high enough that this must have been a regular torrent and probably ripped loose any material and sent it on downstream. So that's kind of what tonight's about. It's just thinking inside the bend and where that bend used to be counts. This is a common problem for a lot of prospectors is they'll look at rivers and think inside the bend, just as it's inside the bend. And it said, inside the bend is where it's going to deposit today. And we'll have deposited inside a different bend, wherever that bend was back then. The problem is identifying an older deposit that was on a different bend, different curvature. That's why sometimes it's just worth taking a random sample. Shoot a dart out there, you know, 20 yards or 50 yards and, and sample it over there. Not too far up the hill, although possibly, okay, the, the point being that these, these bends can appear quite random. 